Right, so this video is on the equilibrium constant, uh, Kc. It's a bit of a weird one because it ties into um, the new specification and that, in case this is still like, exists in years to come, that's the 2015 specification. So it ties into that and it comes into the e uh, chemical equilibria topic, but it's also, uh, which in obviously a year's time and, and, and more, the unit four uh, will become a legacy exam, become a, an, an old unused exam. But it's within that in the equilibrium topic there. So as it stands, this current point in time, which is December 2015, it exists within two separate um, two separate kind of specifications, really, which is a bit of an awkward one. So I'll, I'll put it into both sort of playlists and things. Uh, and in future, none of this will make any sense um, to some people. But uh, yeah, it's, it's the same. It's the same stuff, basically, for both people. Uh, it's the equilibrium constant. So... It's obviously all to do with the equilibrium. Um, I'm, I'm redoing a lot of these videos and I'm moving to the ma the amazing world of 1080p. Um, so hopefully this all works and, and still kind of comes across fine. Um, we've Imagine we've got uh, kind of an, an equilibrium, I guess. We've got uh, A plus 2B. I like working in sort of these general terms um, rather than picking actual reactants. It's just so much easier to get the point across. Uh, so we've got A plus 2B uh, is in equilibrium with C plus 3D. And we're, we're assuming this point that not, not only is it reversible, but it has reached equilibrium. And I'm assuming that we're okay with kind of what equilibrium is and, and how that works and all the rest. What we can do is we can we can use this thing here, which is the equilibrium constant. We can write an expression for the equilibrium constant. So Kc, and this is how it's always written. It's the expression. It's essentially... I'll write it out for this one and, and then we'll, we'll talk through kind of what's what. Um, C, square brackets, D in square brackets, divided by A in square brackets, and B in square brackets. So a few things about this. I might change colour actually. Uh, let's go blue. Look at that, wonderful. Okay, this isn't quite done as it stands because I've not included the two or the three, and hopefully you can see that this has none of those in it, and that needs to be included. So the t B, make sure you get the right bit, the two here becomes the indice, or the index, I should say, the indices as, as they would be uh, in plural. D, we would put a three there. So all we do, we take the... I guess the part of the molar ratio, and we use that as an index. So the 3 goes to become cubed on the D, not on the C. This is C times D cubed, A times B squared. And it could be to the power of 4. Obviously, C is to the power of 1, but we don't include that. It is, it is in theory there, and the same with A, but we don't need to worry about that. So that's uh, a one point there. The other thing is, you may or may not at this point have come across what square brackets are. And all square brackets are... They're a shorthand way of writing the concentration. So I could have the square brackets, you know, with apples in the middle, square brackets penguins, square brackets sodium hydroxide, it doesn't matter. It's just a concentration of, and that's a concentration in moles per decimeters cubed, or moles slash dm3 without the minus. So this is a general equilibrium expression. In this case, it's tied to a specific equilibrium. So this is the A plus 2B in equilibrium with C plus 3D. Equilibrium KC there. Whatever you've got, the general thing is it's product over reactants. Doesn't matter how else you look at it, it's the product over the reactants. And that then is going to give you this position, uh, this point rather, where we're nice and happy. We've got all this. What I am going to try to do as well is I'm actually because I'm changing the way I'm doing this. I'm going to save this, uh, whatever you call this thing, this canvas. I'm going to save it as a picture, and actually I think put it out, put it in the uh, description, um, so that it can be accessed and downloaded. Um, so if people do want these as notes, then they're more than welcome to have them. Um, but no point in me not doing anything with them, so that's that's going to be a change as well. Um, so, KC, 
C times D cubed, taking into account the 3 there, over A times B squared. Nothing overly difficult there. Uh, a couple of bits to say about KC. Um, value of KC, I've changed colour again, because I'm uh, feeling, feeling fancy today. Ooh. Nice. Uh, so, KC. A couple of things. The value of KC generally doesn't change much. This is the same with all constants. So, value... Easiest way, rather than it doesn't change much, it only changes with temperature. And that's very, very important. Changing concentrations of these things doesn't change the value of Kc, because what happens is the equilibrium shifts and all the rest, and it basically fixes itself up. Don't worry about explaining it, just know that it's the case. Changing in pressures doesn't matter. It's only temperature that changes the value of Kc. Okay, so what you'll often get given is you'll get given constants at a particular temperature. The, the constant of this at 298 Kelvin is blah, 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 units, yada, yada, yada. So the value only changes with temperature. That's a very, very key thing. There is uh, quite a nice bit on the Chem Guide uh, page, which goes in de into details about partial pressures and stuff, which is actually in the year two um, portion of the, of the new A-level, uh, but isn't required if you're a Unit 4 person. If you're an, an AS person looking at this, then it will come up next year if you carry on. Um, hopefully that sort of makes some sense. So you could look up KP on the ke on the chem guide, and it just goes in a bit more detail about why some of those changes do not affect the equilibrium constant. But key thing, temperature does change the equilibrium constant. That's very important. Units vary. That's the other tricky one here. The units of KC vary depending on the situation. Here, the units would be, uh, and I'm going to assume it's kind of a bit of mathematical uh, understanding here. So units for Kc would be mole, and I'll write it how I would do sort of in, a, in a lesson situation. I tend to expand the uh, the index because um, I think it just makes the whole thing a little bit easier. Um, oh, and one more. Oh, nearly got tricked out then. So mole di per dm cubed times mole per dm cubed, mole per dm cubed, dm mole per dm cubed. Should have chosen smaller numbers. Um, divided by uh, mole per dm cubed multiplied by squared here, so it's mole per dm cubed mole per dm cubed. Cancel out as much of this as you can. So this cancel, 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 cancel. So in this case, our value for Kc would just be mole per dm cubed, because all the rest of it cancels. You could find that it could be on the bottom, on the top. If it were on the bottom, and we had a bottom heavy one, and we ended up cancelling it so that it was uh, ended up with just thingy over mole per dm cubed, that would then be mole to the minus one dm three. Okay, that's just, bear in mind, that's how you would write it if we had Kc, uh, it was wonky, there was more on the bottom than on the top. Okay, if that if that kind of makes some sense. Right, that's most of the equilibrium constant stuff. Really, it's not a huge amount. The other aspect of this is calculations. Um, the calculations the calculations can be to find the bracketed reactant concentrations, or it can be to find Kc. It all depends on really what's going on. So I'm going to do some past paper questions on um, that. What I'm also going to do is the idea of we could. I'll explain this now. I think it's best I can. Uh, we'll try, let's have a look at a new equilibrium. Let's change pen colour. Uh, let's go for a nice green. So let's take a new equilibrium, which is A plus B. An equilibrium with 3C. One other aspect of calculation, which it kind of ties, it's obviously equilibrium, but it doesn't necessarily tie in with the constant stuff, but a lot of the calculations can come from this. Um, is they often get you'll often get asked to find certain values of moles at uh, equilibrium, and the question might say something like, at equal um, no, uh, uh, one mole of A is added to one mole of 1.5 moles of B and allowed to reach equilibrium. At equilibrium, it is found that there are 1.2 moles of C. Okay, 
So initially we're told we have one mole of A, 1.5 moles of B, and at A equilibrium, we have 1.2 moles of C. The question then would be find the moles of A, or I'll calculate the moles of A and of B. So we've got to think, well, C, where has C come from? Well, C has come from the reaction of A with B. Um, so if we look directly as a as a ratio, we don't have to look at A and B, we can just look at A first of um, an A with C. The ratio of A to C is 1 to 3. So we know that 1 mole of A would produce 3 moles of C. Well, if I've got 1.2 moles of C produced, I know that that must have come from 0.4 moles of A. So 0.4 moles of A would have reacted to produce 1.2 moles of C because of the 1 to 3 ratio. Same true here. B, 0.4 moles of B would have reacted to produce 1.2 moles of C, and that would have also happened. So I know that 0.4 of A would have reacted. Well, if I started with 1, this has got to be 1 minus 0.4, which would be 0.6. B, I started with 1.5, so 1.5 minus 0.4, that would be 1.1. Panic's a bit there for my maths. C, 1.2, and obviously initially we are assuming that was 0. So that's the kind of thing they could get you to do in questions, looking at the ratios and working out what's going where. Provided you can understand what I've just said there, those questions are really, really easy. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do, a couple of cars, paper questions now, uh, and that should be it, and that should be a hopefully a reasonably sort of short video. So this is a paper from January 2011, this is question 3. You'll find equilibrium questions come fairly early on in the paper. Because uh, I guess they're kind of one of the easier topics of it. Uh, so we're given some information here. We're given a reaction between carbon monoxide and hydrogen to produce methanol. Um, and we're given a, a, an enthalpy change there of minus 91. Uh, and we're totally given this information. And that's, this is this bit that I ended the sort of theory section with, with this idea of we're given some mole, molar values here. So a sample of synthesis gas containing 0.24 moles of carbon monoxide, 0.38 moles of hydrogen was sealed together with a catalyst in a container of volume 1.5 decimeters cubed. When equilibrium is established at temperature T1, the equilibrium mixture contained 0.17 moles of carbon monoxide. Right, so we know that we started with 0.24 240 and 0.380 and we ended with 0.170 of carbon monoxide. We're asked for the amount of moles of hydrogen and of methanol in the equilibrium mixture. So this one here after equilibrium has uh, been reached. 0 0.07 moles have been used here. Maths is going well. Yeah, 0 0.07 moles of this have reacted. Well, if we look at the easier one, one to one reaction of my carbon monoxide and my methanol. Therefore, if 0 0.07 moles of this have reacted, they must have therefore produced 0 0.07 moles of methanol. So methanol is going to be 0 0.07. We'll do 0 0.070. Stick with I perhaps should do zero, zero to stick with our three significant figures there. So in methanol should have 0 0.0700 moles at equilibrium. Um, hydrogen. This one started at 0 0.0380. Well, if 0 0.07 of this reacted, they would have reacted with twice that. So they would have reacted with 0 0.14 of hydrogen. That's just 0 0.07 times 2. So 0 0.380 then minus 0 0.140 is going to be 0 0.240 moles of hydrogen, I believe. Uh, just check that I'm okay with that. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 0 0.380 there. Uh, twice to one point. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, 0 0.240. Two reasonably easy marks there. It's about getting your head around. I think these normally people find reasonably tricky because you've got to get your head around sort of the ratios and then obviously the calculations are associated with them. Okay, run expression for the equilibrium constant Kc if this reaction. So what we've got to do is just bust out that same thing as before for this reaction. Nice and easy. Stick Kc here. Doesn't matter if you stick on the lines or not. Just make sure it's all really, really clear. Products over reactants. So CH3OH. 
square brackets. Whoop. Over what do we got? Carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Remember though to include the molar ratio there as an indice, very important. One mark there, it's an easy mark to get, okay, not worth a lot, but it is easy. Okay, we're on 3B now, where we're given some various bits of information. This is a sneaky one, really, because we've got to do some calculations to actually get to uh, our concentrations. But anyway, we're told that at equilibrium, the mixture contains 0 0.210 moles of carbon dioxide. So we're calculating Kc, so let's stick some of this data in as we go along. 0 0.210, okay, and we're told it's 1.5, because we've got to now get to the point, we've actually got to convert these two concentrations, which is annoying, but at the same time, you know, we can, we can do it. 0 0.210 divided by 1.5, so that's my concentration of carbon monoxide, 0 0.210 divided by 1.5, again, standard concentration of molar volume. Uh, 0 0.275 moles of hydrogen, so 0 0.275, again, divided by 1.5, sorry, and then square, and then 0 0.0820 divided by 1.5. No square in cube or anything required for that. So we need to work out the units as well. We've got four marks here. The calculations are a bit of a pain. Um, and this is where I really do need a calculator, but I'll try and let's get this done. Where are we at? So 0 0.0820 divided by 1.5 It's going to be 0 0.0546. Da, 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 da. Uh, at the bottom here, we're going to have 0 0.210. I'm just doing this on the fly as well. 0. 1, 4, and then we got 0 0.275 divided by 1.5, and then we want to then square that, which would help if I could actually find the square button on this ridiculous calculator I've managed to find. That's the 0. 0.336. Do use full numbers if you can. Don't try and actually skip things out. Okay. And what we find is when we do that, we find that the answer is somewhere around 11.6. They're accepted 11.6 11.7. Uh, units here. So that's uh, quite a nice one here. We'll, we'll, I would write out this. I would, as I did in the bit before, mole per dm cubed over mole per dm cubed times mole per dm cubed times mole per dm cubed. So that's my one, one, and then one, two. Again, boom, boom, cancel. We're now left with one over these guys. So mathematically, indices and all that stuff. Mole times mole. It's going to give us mole squared, but because it's 1 over, it becomes mole to the minus 2. dm minus 3, dm minus 3 would normally be dm minus 6, but the problem is because it's 1 over, that actually gets reversed and is now dm6. So our units are mole to the minus 2, dm6. So the Kc for this particular reaction at that temperature, note, at that temperature, remember, is mole to the minus 2, dm6. Nice. State the effect, if any, on the temperature of Kc of adding more hydrogen to the equilibrium mixture. No effect. Because as I said, remember, only temperature changes it, not changing concentrations or doing anything else. Done. Hopefully that's been so. I'm going to stop that there, keep these videos a little bit shorter. Obviously there are loads more past paper questions and all the rest that you can look at. Hopefully that will be of some help. Um, uh, let me know if there's any problems uh, and good luck.